Are you looking to sell on Amazon in Europe but don't know where to start and just overwhelmed by everything you need to think about? Well, we're here to help and today we're going to be talking about five things that you need to consider when selling on Amazon in Europe. Language, localization, logistics, product compliance and tax. So let's start off and talk about language. Now, when I'm talking about language, I'm not only talking about the content that appears on the product pages, I'm also talking about packaging, the leaflets or instructions that be, could, could be included in the packaging as well, as well as customer service. Now, language seems a bit of an obvious one, but there you will be surprised with the number of businesses I talk to that do assume that everyone speaks English. So because they assume everyone speaks English, why not just copy those English listings onto Amazon, Spain, Italy, Germany, and France? And that's not something that is actually true. And even if it is true that a lot of people do speak in English, it is down to making sure that you are listing your items to that specific language, not only for them to understand, but it is also this element of courtesy that some some clients or some customers actually get offended um, when translations haven't been made and we've actually seen negative reviews on listings that have been in English or the packaging and instructions have been in English because they're actually they've purchased it and they want to fix the item up but the instructions have to come back in English and they speak Italian and so that can definitely have a negative experience. So make sure that you are translating all content into that specific language. Now, one thing to note is that sometimes even with the same languages, that they vary by country. You've got American English, you've got British English, you've got Latin American Spanish, and you've got Castilian Spanish or Spanish from Spain. And so it is important that you are adjusting your content for those specific countries as well. And one thing that we always recommend is use a native translator. Yes, you can use Google Translate or there are other third party tools out there that you can use and translate your listings. But one thing is for sure, if you want your listings to be very professional, you need to use a translator. And the best is to use a native speaker because they're really gonna understand how to translate that content into their language and make sure that it is coherent at the same time. Then we look at localization. And so localization looks at two things. It looks at products and it looks at content. And so firstly, products. Now these can vary by market. It could be the it's an electrical item and the voltage is different in the UK to what it is in Europe and the US. It could be sizing. We have different sizing in the UK compared to Europe, compared to North America. And also we have different metrics. So in the US, um, they use feet and inches. In the UK, we focus in Europe, we're focusing more on, on centimeters and meters. So it is important you take that into account when creating your listings and producing products for the European market. There are also words that can have different meanings. So like I was saying about the language, as in it could be the same language, but it differs. It, English differs to American English, um, to British English. And an example here is, I always use this example because I love this example, is pants. So pants in the US, they are known as trousers in the UK. Reason being is that pants in the UK look like this. They're actually your underwear or briefs or undergarments as well. So it is important that you are adapting your content accordingly uh, to avoid any, any errors like this. Not that it's necessarily an error. Everybody is, a number of people are aware of how the words differ, but it's more about imp you will miss out on important keywords if you don't ensure that you are adapting the language to that specific country. And also, the same language can have different spellings. So if we use English as an example, in the UK, we use we add the letter U in color or favor. In the US, you don't use the U. 
Also with things like localization, um, we use S's more in the UK, such as to optimize, whereas in the US, they use Z's. So it's good to make sure that you are adapting your content accordingly as, as sometimes customers can get quite uh, patriotic about, about their language. Also, a direct translation won't suffice. And it, it's, it's what I was talking about as in even with um, the, the different countries as in using a native translator because a direct translation doesn't always make sense in that specific country and also it can result in missing out on loads of major keywords and so it re is important not only to translate content but you're also then reviewing that content and you're making sure that that content is optimized it's coherent and it's got major keywords in to, to help with conversion and then also with search as well then we move on to logistics so logistics, when we talk about logistics, of course, there's international shipping. So there's looking at, there are a number of different freight forwarders that are used to working with Amazon, shipping products from the US to Europe. And so it's making sure that you find yourself uh, a freight forwarding company that can manage all of that for you. And then they can also then manage all the customs duties and sort out all taxes for you as well. Um, and so you don't have to get too involved and let the, let the specialists focus on that area. Now, when shipping into Europe, there is a code that you need in order to import products into the European market, and that's known as the Economic Operator Registration and Identification Number, or also known as the EORI. And so you do need to obtain this, and you would obtain this via a tax specialist that would also be registering you uh, for VAT, which will be coming on shortly. Also, when we're talking about logistics, we need to think about product returns as well. Um, if you don't have a base in that specific country, um, how do you want to manage your returns? Now, it could be you have a low cost item that you'll be more, it'd be easier if Amazon dispose of that. Um, of those returns. But if you have a high cost item and usually like to have those returns back, you might even refurbish, refurbish those um, returns. They might be actually in, in uh, really good condition that there's not anything wrong with them and they're fit for resale. Um, you might then want to find a third party and third, there's a number of different third parties that do exist that can handle that returns process for you. And then lastly, thinking about how you're going to fulfill those, uh, fulfill those orders uh, and manage them. Now, there are different ways in which you can fulfill orders. As you know, in, uh, if you're familiar with Amazon in North America, um, you can do fulfillment by Amazon, where Amazon manages the orders on your behalf, or fulfillment by merchant, where you fulfill those orders directly from your warehouse to the customer. Now, there's really five methods in which you can work with Amazon in, in Europe. Firstly, you can continue doing seller fulfilled. Well, you can do seller fulfilled, but inside Europe. So you would need a base, you would need a warehousing space where you would hold your inventory and ship that product directly out to, to the customer. Um, this is a this is often well it could be seen as low cost but if you're having to pay for warehousing uh, fees it might even be cheaper if you actually just pay for the fulfillment by amazon fees instead but some businesses usually go for this option if they already have some warehousing in that specific country you might continue to want to do seller fulfilled but outside of europe maybe you're shipping products directly from the us there are businesses that do this, especially uh, within media, but this is definitely not something we would recommend. Products get hold, held at customs. Um, sometimes customs then ask for the customer to pay a customs fee, an additional charge, and it then becomes a really bad experience for the customer. And what we want to avoid is negative customer experiences as they often result in negative seller feedback and negative customer reviews as well. 
Now then we move on to fulfillment by Amazon and there are three different types of fulfillment by Amazon in Europe. Firstly, there's fulfilled by Amazon European Fulfillment Network, also known as EFN. And what that means is you choose a specific country, your home country that you want to hold inventory in and holding inventory in Amazon's fulfillment centers. So let's use the UK as an example. You then want to list your products on Germany or France, Italy and Spain. Um, but you don't necessarily want to have inventory in all those countries. You might not yet know what type of demand is for your product in those countries. And so you fulfill all orders in other countries from your pool of inventory in the UK. Now, what that means is you would have to pay, well, the items are prime eligible in all countries, which is fantastic, a key, key, uh, key plus point there. But it does take a few more days for the customer in France to receive the item because it's being shipped from the UK. So instead of it being a next day delivery, the delivery times are around two to three days. So the div delivery is slightly uh, slower, but it's not that, not that slow. We're not talking about five to 10 days. Um, it's, as I say, it's still prime eligible. Um, the only thing uh, really on a downside, apart from it being a slightly slower delivery time is that you will have to pay cross-border fees. So in addition to the fulfillment by Amazon fees, there is a slightly uh, slight fee for cross-border as well. And all of that information is available on Seller Central UK and they'll give you a calculator and show you all those different costs. You then have fulfillment by Amazon Pan-European and Pan-European is basically where you dis you actually have inventory in every single country uh, within Europe, all the different the five marketplaces. So the UK, France, Italy, Germany and Spain. And the real key here is that, yes, items are, are prime eligible as they are in EFN, but the items are there are very close to the customer. And so the customer can receive that item via a next day delivery. And then also the seller doesn't have to pay those cross border fees as well. What happens is you decide on your home country, you send a shipment into that home country and then Amazon take that inventory and they then redistribute that inventory across all five marketplaces based on current demand and their systems their intelligent systems telling them where they should redistribute that inventory. And then you have mm, fulfillment by Amazon, multi-country inventory, MCI. And that's really a mix of EFN and pan-European. And basically you get to decide what countries you want to hold the inventory in. You might not want it on all five marketplaces. You might want it in the largest marketplaces, Germany and the UK. And so what it would be is you hold inventory in Germany and the UK, products can get there next day. Um, and then for countries such as Spain, Italy and France, those will be where you would have to pay a cross border fee and the delivery time would be slightly, slightly sl slower. We often find that when businesses are new to Europe, let's say they might already be selling in North America, they often jump onto EFN first. Then they might want to test the water with, let's say, um, they start EFN UK. Then they want to test the water with Germany. They get all their listings translated, localized. And then once they start to expand and see success in Germany, let's say, they might then look into a pan-European um, strategy. Now, a couple of things to note about fulfillment by Amazon in Europe is we've already discussed that for, for even if you're holding inventory in the UK and the order comes from France, it will still be prime. It will still the customer will still get prime delivery. Um, really, the key differences between the different fulfillment methods is all about the speed of delivery, how soon the customer can get it if they get it next day or two to three days. And so you want to take that into consideration when selecting the best fulfillment by Amazon method. You also need the cross-border fees, as I mentioned. Um, if the inventory has to go from the UK to France, there will be an additional charge. Um, and if you end up doing loads of business in France, 
it might make more sense to actually hold inventory in that country as opposed to constantly paying those cross-border fees. Then lastly, there's tax obligations, which we're going to talk about um, a bit more shortly. But really what this means is this is sometimes the why some businesses don't choose to go pan-European from the start because pan-European sounds great oh you can ship your inventory to one country and then it's redistributed over to multiple countries but what that means is you have a tax obligation as a non-EU seller is when you're holding inventory in that specific country so if you're only holding inventory in the UK You'll only have a tax obligation in the UK unless you're doing a certain amount of sales in the other marketplaces, the other countries that comes over the sales threshold. However, if you're doing pan-European and you've got inventory in every single country, all five marketplaces, and in fact it ends up being seven marketplaces because Amazon hold inventory in Poland and Czech Republic as well for Germany, then you would have to be VAT red or tax registered, also known as VAT, for all seven different marketplaces, which becomes very costly as well. Now, I'm talking about tax obligations. I'm only skimming the surface. It can be a lot more complicated but than that. And so I'm briefly touching on reasons why some businesses choose to go for one method than another. Um, I would always recommend that you do t speak with a tax specialist. Um, we are in no way uh, recommending that you do certain methods based on, on taxes. Again, as I mentioned, we are not those specialists. But these are the four key reasons or the four factors as to why a business chooses one method over the other. Then we can talk, talk about product compliance. So there are country specific laws. There are also EU directives as well. And so in, in Europe, they have different, different directives such as they have the WE directive, W-E-E-E, -E -E, which stands for the Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment. And basically it's just some rules around the disposal of electronics. There's also competition law in Europe as well that doesn't allow you to publish a map price. Map price doesn't exist in, in Europe. It's seen as anti-competitive. There is also CE marking that needs to be on certain products such as electricals and toys. And that is like a stamp or a certification of approval that these products meet certain health and safety regulations as well. Then there's certain requirements with product labeling and this, you, there are some EU standards, but they can also vary uh, at country level as well. This is definitely uh, can be a challenge for food supplements. So sports nutrition products, they're seen as food supplements um, and food items um, as well. They, these are definitely areas that uh, the EU is very strict on. And also there's product restrictions. There are items that you might be able to sell on North America that you can't then in Europe. And so it is important you check this out on Seller Central before going ahead and making investments to bring in those products into the European market. Then lastly, there's sales tax. So as I mentioned, it's known as VAT, value added tax. And basically there are the tax VAT, applies to all European countries, but the amount varies uh, and the rules vary by country. And so, for example, it's 20% in the UK, and I believe it's slightly higher or even 21% in Germany. So it does, it does vary. What you really need to do is you need to speak with a tax specialist. And there are a number of third parties out there that you can talk with, such as Alvalara, uh, or simply VAT and if you go to our website you'll see there are some companies third parties that we do recommend and work with and our clients use and it's important there because you really it can be quite complicated if you're from the North America North America you're probably already used to the complicated tax system across states 
it's the same within Europe. So it is, it is important that you speak with a VAT specialist to understand your tax obligations. A lot depends on where your inventory is being held. But also, as I mentioned before, it also comes down to, it varies by country and also depends on the sales threshold and how many sales you're doing in another country. And so key actions to really take away from this session is use a native translator, translate the content, but also localize it. Appoint a freight forwarder that can manage all of the international shipping and customs. Decide on the fulfillment method that you want to use and also a home country, whether that be that you want to create your account in the UK and hold your inventory in the UK, or if you want your home account to be Germany or another country. Understand all the different legal requirements for your products to ensure that they are compliant and also understand your VAT obligations as well. So hopefully that gives you some insight into selling in Europe. There's lots of things to think about. By in no means, please don't feel overwhelmed. Hopefully this has been able to give you some areas to focus on. The reason I say don't be overwhelmed is that there are so many third parties out there that have solutions that can help you. And if you need any help with looking or selling into Europe, and selling on Amazon, then by all means get in touch with us at ecommercenurse.com.